You're watching physics class. Yay! Lesson one, circular motion. This is Bob, and this is his cat. Meow. Bob likes to swing his cat around his head, and when he does this, lots of physicsy things happen. Because it's circular motion, the velocity is always changing, even if it's spinning the cat at a constant speed. This is because the direction of velocity is always a tangent to the circle. Acceleration acts towards the centre of the circle, for some reason. This means the force also acts in this direction, according to this equation. This is called the centripetal force, and it could be lots of different things. For example, the tension in a string, the gravity between planets, the electrostatic force in atoms, or the friction on a car. To work out the centripetal force, you times the mass by the velocity squared and divide it by the radius. The angular velocity is how much of an angle the object passes through in one second. Angular velocity is measured in radians per second and has this curly W symbol. Make sure you work in radians! Now, if Bob decided to spin his cat in a vertical circle, then the tension in the string will change depending on whereabouts the cat is. At the top of the circle, the centripetal force is the sum of the tension and the weight. But at the bottom of the circle, the tension and the weight act in different directions, so the centripetal force is the tension minus the weight. Because we know the centripetal force and the weight are both going to stay constant, we know that the maximum tension will be at the bottom of the circle, and the minimum tension will be at the top of the circle. Finally, there's a whole bunch of equations that you can use for circular motion, but don't worry because you'll be given most of them in your formula booklet in the exam.